we're back, and we're continuing this really fascinating conversation with one of the most illuminating people I've ever met, Eric Metaxas, um, star of Stage and Screen, and our guest here at Securing America. Eric, uh, you were talking about tyranny and the character of tyranny in our time and the extent to which it is truly evil and determined to destroy what is good. And that would include, I think, very much the United States of America, which stands for freedom and has sought to protect it elsewhere around the world as well as here at home. Finish that thought, if you would, and and if you can, uh, put this into a, a real world, real time context yeah. of uh, of Ukraine. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm not going to pretend that that I have the Ukraine situation even slightly figured out. I'll just say what I know. Um, first of all. I have been one of those who, since 1991, wondered uh, exactly what was going on. In other words, if the Soviet Union collapses, I never really understood the idea of why we needed NATO. I wasn't one of those people who said, we don't, or uh, I'm against NATO. But I, it, it struck me then, to some extent, and increasingly so now, that there are... I guess today I would call them deep state actors. There are people uh, in the United States government who don't see the world the way I do. They 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 don't want uh, American liberty to bless uh, other nations. That we want to spread our freedom. They still see things maybe as a zero sum game. Maybe um, the Cold War is profitable for them. I don't know. But what I do know uh, is that they are cynical. And so I feel that part of how we got here, I mean, somebody has to say it once an hour, the reason I think Putin did what he did is simply because we have a, an unprecedentedly weak president projecting unprecedented uh, weakness uh, and that what happens in those moments, whether it's in the jail, uh, in jail or in the schoolyard, bullies take advantage of it. Tyrants take sure advantage do. of it. Bad actors take advantage of it. So that needs to Evil be said. Evil takes advantage of it. What's that? Evil takes advantage well, of well, it. Well, there's no question that we have to be clear. Yes, that we're talking about evil. So when you don't project strength, strength, again, it's not just strength, but it's a kind of, it's the kind of a strength that Jesus projected. It's a kind of authority that comes from God. It's not mere uh, I'm stronger than you, although maybe that's how, you know, the bullies read it. But I guess so that's part of it. And that we would be crazy not to think that China is going to take its moment uh, again, you know, to take advantage of us because they see right. that now is the time to strike. We'd be fools not to strike. So that's very important. But I also think that, um, you know, U- Ukraine has been used cynically uh, by uh uh, Americans in, in the way that we have done this, you know, going back, uh, I don't know, l- longer than I know, but, you know, into the 50s that we really, um, it's one thing to talk about our own, about, about our self-interest, but it's another thing to cynically uh, play with nations and with with people. And so, uh, yeah, I, I never really understood why we were wanting to expand NATO. And I say this out of genuine ignorance, but the point is the case <clears throat> if, if, when somebody doesn't make a case, I'm very, um, I'm, I become increasingly curious, and then I become skeptical. I say, what What am I missing mm. here? Uh, it, we, we know Putin's bad, but he's not Stalin. He's not Khrushchev. He's not Brezhnev. What What am I missing? If somebody needs to make the case that yes, he is that, and he wants to, you know, re- re- recreate the Soviet <clears throat> Union. But when people don't make that case, I I get confused and then I mistrust our side, I guess. Well, I, I just to calibrate, I guess, um, and this is why I was so anxious to talk with you, Eric. I, we've seen, I think, in the face of uh, what's being done to Ukraine, evil, uh, and that uh, whether he's a, on a par with uh you know, the uh, the horrors of yesteryear, Joseph Stalin yeah. coming to mind as the man right. who uh, literally starved to death millions yeah. of Ukrainians, uh, or whether he's simply in our time, somebody who is willing to use 
considerable military power to devastate uh, a country that yearns to be part of the West and I, I think was a good candidate for it. <clears throat> and whether we should, in fact, regard it as uh, you know, vital interest of the United States that they be part of the West, uh, I think is a, a question that we'll probably be debating for years. But I do think where we find ourselves at this moment, and I just like your you know, sort of closing thoughts on this. Yeah, yeah is if this is a function or a, a, a manifestation of spiritual warfare, and if good and evil are joined at the moment in this particular battle space, um, do you feel as though we have an obligation as a nation to, at the minimum, help those who are fighting for freedom in places like Ukraine, and possibly places like Taiwan in the not too distant future, or or maybe even India, um, if they wind up, as you say, being the next victims of uh, of totalitarian tyrannical yeah. aggression. And if so, um, do you think that uh, this is really not simply uh, an instance of uh, doing something for somebody else, but but vital to our own um, freedoms and interests well, here as well? Yeah, the, I'll, I'll disappoint you by, by by giving a firm I don't know. And when I say I don't know, what I mean by that is we have to ask ourselves, who is the United States? Is the United States the Biden administration and General Milley and others? I, I cannot be represented by those people. The United States, Agreed. which is to say we the people, that's another story entirely. And I don't think it is we the people and the American founders vision that brought about what is happening in Ukraine. It's, it's uh, as I said, the projected weakness of this country, our inability to deal with China, which you're, uh, <laughs> you're an expert on this kind of stuff. And so I find myself being confused because I don't like the idea of um, our uh, men and women in uniform doing the bidding of people that don't represent us. So in a sense, yeah. um, until Needless we know who we are and what we stand for. In other words, if we in this country uh, are for vaccine mandates, and if we in this country are for transgender madness, and if we are for playing patty cake with the evil in China, then I honestly find myself paralyzed to know what it is we are to do. I say that- This is a subject to which we're gonna return as a result, because we both have thoughts on this subject and we need to share them, I think. Eric, thank you for your time today. Come back to us soon. Thanks to the rest of you for joining us for this edition of Securing America. I hope you feel better equipped to do just that. And that you'll visit us for more information at securingamerica.tv and then go forth and multiply.